next to you. Just look at them. Don't say anything. Just look at them. On the left and on the right. But do you know what you see? I'll tell you what you see. You see the victory of Jesus in that person that you're standing next to. All right. That's Ron Cannoli. Back in the day, you see the victory of Jesus. The chart topping song. We declare that the kingdom of God is here. Father, we thank you tonight. Your word is alive and active. It is quick and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and of spirit and of the joints and of the marrow. It is a discerner of the motives and the very intentions of the heart. Let your word have free course tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Good night, everybody. I'm going to go for half an hour tonight. And quite a few nights. People are busy, so they're not watching. And I don't just want to teach for the sake of teaching alone. And it doesn't have the level of impact. Because a lot of God's people are caught up in the holidays. They're busy with their shopping, etc., etc. And... Uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God is just not what's happening. You see how easy it is to get sidetracked? And so God, again, takes second place to the holidays. Then it'll be New Year. God will take second place again. Then it'll be uh, Valentine. God will take second place again. And so the, the constant different days of the year when we get busy and hyped and we put God last, and the same people that put God last, they wonder why God doesn't put them first. Listen, bro, sister, you cannot put God second and God put you first. You cannot put God first and God put you last. And you cannot put God last and God put you first. And for the rest of the people, God is not anywhere on their agenda. He's not anywhere at all. I heard a program today, I listened for about five minutes and the man was talking about God and he said the man upstairs 
And he said it in a very matter of fact, almost buddy buddy type of, of thing. And I thought to myself, here's this man referring to God as the man upstairs. Now I know what he meant to say, but that level of irreverential way of speaking about God, that has got to stop. Or else people will have very little regard for God. I heard one song that says, I am a friend of God. Whoa, I am a friend of God. And we've got to be careful that God is not our buddy and our chum. And we've got to be, you know, a little more in reverential awe of the Almighty. And stop this uh, buddy, buddy, chummy, chummy system whereby... We speak of God as though he were our friend next door. So here we go. The Bible is about the kingdom of God. There's not a story, a storyline. There's not an Old Testament storyline or New Testament storyline that does not point to the kingdom of God. And so I'm going to begin. Now you would notice as I do this teaching... I'm going to be circling back and picking up some old stuff and bringing it with some new stuff. Then I'll do some new stuff. Then I'll go back again with some old stuff because a lot of people are tuning in and some of them have very little idea what I'm talking about. I am shocked at how little church-going people for decades how little clue they have about the kingdom of God and what it entails and what is the kingdom. So, and in, a, in any event, whenever I'm doing a new subject, I always get repeating myself. I get to repeating myself. I get to repeating myself because repetition is the mother of learning. And as you repeat, 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 it begins to stick. That's what they did to us. COVID-19, stay six feet apart. COVID-19, and it's almost like we got brainwashed until the point I was in a, in a mall one time and my mask hung below my nostrils and this woman, it's almost like she saw the Antichrist or she saw somebody with a gun aimed at her head or something and she screamed out in the store, Mister, put on your mask properly. And I smiled at her because I thought to myself, everybody's a doctor now. Well, if Bill Gates is a doctor and, and if Fauci is a doctor, God have mercy on the rest of us. And so, the Bible is about a king. It's about a king and his kingdom. It's about a king in another country seeking to influence earth through his children who are kingdom citizens. The only thing is, the children do not recognize themselves as kingdom citizens. The children do not recognize the king. The children do not care about the other country. They rarely pray thy will be done here on the earth where we live as it is done in heaven. And so they can't make the mental leap from their religiosity to a kingdom mindset. It's hard to change your mind. You know why? Because you need your mind to change your mind. <laughs> and if you've been brainwashed in a particular way, and I'm saying most of the church has been brainwashed into a religion. And uh, when I say to people, they, they ask questions like, I thought you were a religious man, Rev. And I tell them, no. And then I, I land a hammer. I said, Jesus did not come here to start another religion. Whoa, what? What do you mean, Jesus? Blasphemy. <laughs> Some people even get nervous. They, they stand away like, you know, this guy is bringing heresy into the kingdom. In the first place, it's not the kingdom. What you're talking about is church. And the church is not the church that Jesus died for. The church that Jesus died for is called the, the, the church, the ecclesia. Now, ecclesia, <laughs> pay attention. Ecclesia is not a religious word. It talks about the parliament of God, the government of God, the rule of God. 
It's a political word. Ecclesia is a political word. It is not a religious word. Old Testament means old will. New Testament means new will. It is not a religious word. It is a legal word. It's a word for the courts. A will. It's a new rule, a new testament. The new will that was signed by whoever died. So it is now enforced because of the death of the testator. We are going to have to get our terms right because a lot of times people hear words and they make assumptions and the assumption is wrong. And if you have a wrong assumption from the inception, everything that you built that wrong assumption on will be wrong. Your premise was wrong. Your foundation was wrong. I made a statement that seemed to have rattled the teeth of some people. I said, Christianity was the name Christian was given by pagans. They said, what are you talking about? It was a pagan group of people that gave them the name Christian. The Bible you read is not even a religious book. The Bible is about the laws that govern the kingdom of heaven and uh, how we should govern ourselves. It's a rule book. It's the constitution of heaven. It's the laws of heaven, the mandates of heaven, the rules of heaven. And uh, we need to stop playing these games. Jesus said in his message, he said, you know, the heathen, when the heathen pray, they pray for what they're going to eat, what they're going to wear, and what they're going to drink. And he said, it shall not be so among you. You don't pray like that, like the heathen. And then I made the point, and that was another rattler. I said the word heathen does not mean the person is an atheist. Heathens mean they have many, many gods. So they are a very religious people. The heathens are a very religious people. But in our minds we assume that heathen means they don't believe in God. They do believe in God. They were praying for God's sake. Praying about what they're going to eat. Praying about what they're going to wear. Praying about what they're going to drink. Now when you check the prayers of the heathen. And you check the prayers of the Christian. The prayers are one and the same. The Christians pray exactly like that. What are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? And Jesus said, people that pray like that are heathen. Because they don't have a heavenly father who knows what they have need of. But the heavenly father does not give you what you need unless, A, you seek first his kingdom and his right ways of ruling. Then these things that the heathen pray about, what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, what you're going to drink, then these things will be added unto you. There's no addition coming when you don't seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. There are two things in play here. Seek first the kingdom of God. And then, in addition to that, seek his righteousness. His righteous laws. His righteous ways of doing things. What does that mean? It means that you are going to have to get yourself way, way, way more familiar with what the scripture has to say about the kingdom of God with what Jesus had to say about the kingdom of God, with what the Father had to say about the kingdom of God. Now, in mentioning the Father, I'm going to go back to the Father's original plan because his plan has not changed. The thing that he wanted in Genesis 1 is the same thing he wants in Revelation 22. What does he want? I'm glad you asked. God is king and sovereign in heaven. He rules in the heavenly realm. He sat in council with himself and decided, I want to share this glory, this wealth that I'm experiencing here as king in heaven. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make me a kingdom of kings. But they can't be up here in heaven. I'm going to make them down there in the place called earth. Follow my, my uh, explanation now. Because you can't have two kings in the same kingdom. They have to be separate and somebody has to be the king somewhere else. So kingdoms usually have what you call expansion. Or what we saw in our day and time, in our lifetime, colonialism. When we became colonies of these 
kingdoms that were expanding their dominion. So God was expanding. He was carrying on an expansion program. And the expansion moved from heaven to earth. That's where he took spirit from himself and put the mud around it and breathed into it the breath of life. And the spirit with the mud on it became a living soul. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Five things. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Adam, you are the master of this earth realm. What you are to do is to stick with my program, with my ways of doing things. How was Adam going to know? God was going to come in the cool of the day and talk to him in the Garden of Eden. Are you feeling me now? So Adam was to raise up a kingdom of sons unto God and unto himself and teach them the ways of God. And while he, Adam, taught them the ways of God, God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven, the unseen realm. So this unseen king with an unseen country, but it's a place. Jesus, when he told them where he was going, he said, I go to prepare a place. Heaven is a place. It's not some spooky, gooky mystical, magical something in the outer world. It's a place. Satan, when he tried to be God, said, I will ascend on the sides of the north and I will be like the Most High God and the angels will come and worship me. You can't have two kings in one place. Michael kicked him out. And so God's plan was to raise up on earth a kingdom of sons. Sons both meaning both male and female. Women are sons too. Now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear that we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Adam's job was to make earth look like what heaven looks like. Make what is going on on earth look like what's going on in heaven. But instead of doing that, Adam decided to rebel against God. And he had an insurrection against the government of God, against the rule of God, against the realm of God, against the jurisdiction of God, against the laws of God, against the protocols of God, against the constitution of God. Adam became a traitor. He joined the snake, Lucifer. He joined the, the devil in rebelling against God. And consequently, what he was saying was, this colony earth, is not going to be like heaven. We're going to have our own stuff happening down here. Get out of here. And, he, and God got a kick from Adam and Eve. The devil had already tried to kick him, but you know, he's not in God's class. Michael dealt with him. Jesus said, I beheld Satan like lightning fall from heaven. So man, what he did, because God gave him dominion, when he ate the fruit and rebelled against God, he handed over his dominion to El Diablo, to Satan. So man fell from dominion, a place of mastery. Now that is why when Jesus came with his message, his initial message, the first thing he said, repent for the kingdom of God has arrived. What is he talking about? Now the word pent means the highest place, the highest spot on the hotel. You have the penthouse, the top spot. Where only the elite of the elite of the elite can go. You've got to have big bucks to stay in the penthouse. So when Jesus said, repent, come back to the top. What he's saying to man, come back to your place of rulership and glory and mastery and dominion. That is what repentance is. It is not a religious term, meaning you go to the altar and you feel sorry and you cry and you go home and do the same wickedness again. So man had to now change his mind. What? When did his mind change? His mind changed in the garden when he decided he was going to overthrow the authority of God on earth and rebel against it. He changed his mind against God and walked away with the devil. Now he has to change his mind for God and repent. Come back to your high place. That's what repentance is. It's changing your mind. 
Now, who's your mind set against? Your mind is set against God. We were aliens and enemies of God. But now are we the sons of God. Those who have changed their minds have become sons of God. Good night to everybody. And so now here's the dilemma. Man is on earth. God gives him mastery, rulership, dominion on planet earth. And man is to raise up a kingdom of sons and teach this message that there is a kingdom country out there with a king. And he wants us to follow his rules and regulations up there because he's the one that created everything down here. Kingdom. The Bible is about the kingdom and the king. And the kings who he is king of. And the lords who he is lord of. Now notice the Lord gives us these high titles, these big names. If he, the Lord Jesus, is king of kings, who is he king of? Us. The Bible refers to us as kings and priests of God. Well, if we are kings, what are we kinging over? Now, therein lies the predicament because we have been fallen for so long. We haven't walked with God for so long. And we have been churchized. And we have been religionized. But we have not been kingdomized. So even when we come to deal on the God realm, most of the information that I would say 90 plus percent of the information that we have received is wrong information. 90 plus percent of the information we have received, we have put things that are important in the back burner and put unimportant ningi ningis in the front burner. Our sermons and our messages and our teachings do not reflect the priority of the kingdom of God. Our priority is not God's priority. Jesus, when he sent them out in Matthew 6 and 33, he said, But don't pray like the heathen. What am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? What am I going to drink? But if you want those things to come to you, this is what you must do. First, what does first mean? Foremost. The number one thing. So what is Jesus saying? Guys, the number one thing you must do and teach others to do when you go to the nations is to seek first the kingdom of God. And when he told them to go out and preach, he said, preach. The kingdom of God has arrived. He told them what message to preach. You couldn't preach your own message. You had to preach what he told you to preach because he's the Lord and King. He's the master. He's the one in charge. We are following him. Hopefully. But for the most part, when you examine the facts, it, we are not following him. We are doing what we want to do. We are making priorities of things that is not his priority. The things that he said we should do first, we do last. And for the most part, we don't do it at all. As I continue to preach and teach on this message, I'm getting a lot of uh, very negative vibes. From a lot of God's people. One person went so far. They said, look, Rev. If we are to accept this message. They said, what are, you, what are you talking about? What do you mean if? Did you see it in the scripture? Yes, but here, here, here a brother out. Here a brother out. Here a brother out. If we are to receive this message, it will be like admitting that we were doing the wrong message all the time. I said, yes, that's what we were doing. He said, but then it will look like we were deceived for a very long time. I said, you got that right. I can't accept that, Rev. I, I can't accept that. I'm a diehard Pentecostal, and you know I've been in this church long, and I can't accept the message that you are bringing. I said, I'm not bringing any message. Did you read your Bible? Did you see it in the scripture? Did he say, seek first the kingdom of God? He said, yes. Do you not quote that scripture? Yes. Well, that's what it's saying. I know. But it's making me look bad like I was in the wrong all the time. You are in the wrong all the time. What are you talking about? Nothing admitting that you're wrong. The quicker you admit, the quicker you can get right. Well, he didn't like that explanation either. 
the, the mere fact that he was in church for decades and had to admit that he may have had the wrong priority is too much for his ego. He can't, he can't handle it. It's too much, Rev. It's too much. No. I'm not going to admit that. I, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with what I know. But look, the Bible is telling you to do something else. I know. I know. Man, Rev. Man, don't say no more. <laughs> and most Christians are like that. You see, when you back them up with biblical truth, they start itching and scratching and start to fix their tie and <clears throat> they don't want to talk to you after that. They see you coming and they say, hey, there goes that kingdom cult guy. He's a cult. May God have mercy on our souls. What God sent Jesus to do is to bring us back the dominion that we lost. To give it back to us. Give us back our power. Give us back our glory. Give us back our vaunted position with God. Give us back our sonship. Give us back our citizenship. Give us back our citizenship rights, benefits, and privileges. That's what Satan doesn't want us to have. And you know what Jesus said? He said, look. The kingdom of God is like a man who goes out to sow. In those days, the farmer would have the bag of seeds on his back with a hole in it. He'd shove his hand in there and ever so often he'd throw the seed. And some would fall on good ground and some would fall on stony ground and some would fall where a little bit of earth is and it'll spring up and then because there's no more art, it'll die pretty soon. And some will f fall on rocky places and nothing will happen to it. And he said the kingdom of God is like that. It's like a sword that goes out to sow. Not everybody will receive the message. Not everybody will bear, you know, get root and bear fruit. And he said as soon as this message is preached, then come the birds of the air. The birds of the air represent the demonic entity. And then in another case he said, Immediately Satan cometh and steals the word. Which word? The word about the kingdom of God. Satan is so afraid of this message that he takes personal responsibility of coming to the church when the message is being preached. Coming himself. And stealing the word from the hearts of the people. What can happen to steal that word? Somebody's car bumps into another one. Someone scratches one of the brethren's car. Some child misbehaves. Some husband comes to the church and assaults his wife physically or verbally. Anything to distract from the word. Anything to steal the impact of the word from God's people. That is going to happen when that service is done. Some major distraction to keep their minds from chewing and pondering and meditating on the word that they heard. There was a group of people in the New Testament called the Bereans, B-E-R-E-A-N-S, the Bereans. And these brethren, when they heard a word, this is what they did. They went home. No, no dinner yet. They went home. They took out the Torah. And they searched through the scriptures. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. They searched through the scriptures to see whether what the preacher was saying was true. I would be so happy if people would search to see whether what I'm saying is true. I'd be happy for them to do that. That's why I give so much scripture. That you can go and read the scripture for yourself. Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Question to you. What are you doing first with regard to God? Are you seeking the kingdom first? The answer is no. How do I know that? Because of the questions that I get. The questions just demonstrate the high extraordinary level of lack of knowledge on the subject matter regarding the kingdom of God. Very few preachers can put together a proper message on the kingdom of God. They can do everything else that he did not tell them to do. They do that well. 
But the one thing that he seemed to be banging away, we not even giving it a blink. The Bible is about the kingdom of God. But what has happened is that our theology in the church leads people away from Jesus' theology. In Matthew 10 and 7, Jesus said, when you go, you must preach this message. Which message? The kingdom of God. We preach everything else but what he said to preach. In Matthew 24, 14 to 19, he said, And this gospel of the kingdom of God shall be preached to all nations, ethnos, ethnic groups, different groups, people, groupings, and then shall the end come. Oh, when I said that, that created another ruckus. It's a ruckus time. God said, look, the trumpets will sound, the dead in Christ will rise for us. Those that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So shall they ever be with the Lord. That part I will do. I'll blast the trumpet. I'll raise the dead. I'll raise the living. And I'll bring you up to live forever. That is my part. But in order for that to happen, there's a part you must play. You people down there on earth that claim to know me. What part are we to play? I'm glad you asked. Jesus said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to every ethnic group. Every people group. Every disciplined group. Preach it to the lawyers in their language. Preach it to the doctors in their language. Preach it to the entertainers in their language. And when you have done that, when this gospel of the kingdom is preached to the ends of the earth and to all ethnic groups, then shall the end come. What end? The end of the world. No amount of climate change will end this world. No nuclear bomb will end this world. That's not the what the scripture is teaching. Don't let these people fool you and get you all hyped up in fear. Climate change will not cause the world to be destroyed. There's no way in the biblical text where that happens. None. Neither nuclear bombs. Kim Jong-un could make how much mess he wants to make. He's soon out of here anyhow. He's about to lose his mind like the king in the Old Testament that says, this great Babylon hanging gardens that I have built. And then Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind and crawled out of the place, started eating grass. Insanity is coming to that house. Like Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. And then and only then shall the end come. When shall the end come? When this gospel of the kingdom of God is preached. I am not talking about the gospel of salvation. I am not talking about Calvary. I am not talking about the blood of Jesus cleansing us from all sin. All of that is true. That's not the gospel and that's not what he asks us to preach. He asks us to preach the message of the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? <clears throat> the kingdom of God is the country of God. The kingdom of God is the realm of God. It's the rule of God. It's the reign of God. It's the laws of God. It's the governmental structure that God has set up in heaven and wants us to replicate and duplicate down here on earth. God is the king of the domain, of the dominion. Of the jurisdiction of heaven. Glory. He has a foreign kingdom. And we are down here on earth. As citizens of that kingdom. Our job. Is to make. What happens on earth. Look like what's happening up there. Up there in the kingdom country. In our country. In our place of citizenship. We are citizens of heaven. And we are down here. To make the earth reflect heaven. So we have got to know the, the laws of the country that we are from. Don't ask if there's a country out there and if there's extraterrestrial life. There is extraterrestrial life. We are E.T. and we phone home. E.T. phone home. The end of everything has to do with the preaching of the kingdom. We, the believers who do not preach the kingdom, are hindering the coming of Christ by not doing what he said. I 
And the word seek the kingdom of God doesn't mean to pray. He's not talking about prayer. He's talking about get to know all the information you can about the king, his domain, his laws, his rules, his jurisdiction, and what he wants to happen down here on earth. It's not talking about prayer. Seek means you're going a quest for knowledge. You're going hard after it. It's priority. It's the number one thing you do every single day you wake up. What more can I learn about the kingdom of God? What do I know about the kingdom of God? What do I know about the king of the kingdom? What do I know about the country? What do I know about his jurisdiction and realm? What do I know about what he wants man to do? What do I know about the kingdom that he wants to establish in the hearts of his children and down here on earth? What do I know about making men believe that the rules and laws of the foreign country that I'm from, heaven, is supposed to be the laws and rules down here. Thou shalt not kill, steal, all that kind of stuff, plus more. What do you know about that? It will require an extraordinary level of reading and studying your Bible, which most of you don't give a rip about with all your pretensions of being a Christian. Christians are the most pretensive people on the planet. They pretend like they love God. They pretend like they love Jesus. But for this season here, you can't find them in God's house on the nights and days when they said they are going to be in church. They're not going to be there because they have to buy blinds and they have to cook food and they have to give gifts and they have to do all the other stuff that has nothing to do with Jesus and nothing to do with his kingdom. But they're busy doing that. And like how I just said that, they're offended. They are deeply offended. How dare you? Every year we do this. <laughs> How dare you doing that every year and not doing what the Lord told you to do? How dare you? Let me turn it back on you now. How dare me? How dare you? Prioritizing everything else and never prioritizing what God has said. And you have the nerve to be upset when somebody challenges your sorry donkey. How dare you put God last and want God to put you first? How dare you be ignorant of the kingdom after all the warnings that Jesus has given in the scripture? How dare you not read the book that God has sent to you, but you're reading everything else? How dare you watch five, six movies in a day and not put your face in the word of God to seek to find out about the kingdom? How dare me? Not how dare me. How dare you? <laughs> I'm not mad at you, so don't, don't get all the... Oh, I'm, I'm not going to watch him again after now because I'm not taking that. I'm a big woman and nobody can talk to me like that. That's your problem again. Nobody has talked to you. Nobody has challenged you with your mediocre life that you claim to be a Christian. At best, your Christianity is mediocre. That's why you do all them sinful things and still go to church with a, with a dry face as though nothing is wrong. Come on now. The end of all things have to do with the preaching of the kingdom. And we, the believers, are hindering the coming of Christ by not doing what he said. What? We are hindering the second coming. Because we have not preached the gospel of the kingdom. When that gospel is preached. Then shall the end come. That's why the end has not come. All this nonsense about Jesus take the wheel. All those people who say that are irresponsible and ignorant. Ignorant of scripture. Because they would not ask Jesus to take the wheel. When he gave them the driver's license to be driving down here on planet earth. Spreading the word of his kingdom. Whoo! When we claim to go to nations, if we claim to go to nations, our message has to be the right message. Kingdom. We must stop financing error. We must stop supporting the wrong preachers with the wrong message. We must stop investing in things that are not priority to God. That's what we must stop doing. Oh, this is going to create a fight for those greedy preachers. Especially those who have been receiving money from us on a regular basis. Until your message changes to the priority of the message that Jesus is preaching, ain't nothing coming down the pike for you, bro. Sis, sorry. Kingdom first. What we are going to do in 22 is prioritize what is priority to God. What we're going to do in 22 is put first what God put first. What we're going to do in 22 
is not to support things that do not support God's primary objective and agenda. Are you feeling the feeling now? Are you getting the symptoms? 22, our motto is two words. Kingdom first. 22, our motto is three words. First, the kingdom. This is the boom. I'm challenging you. I'm stretching you. I know you're upset with me sometimes. I know you think I'm mad at you. I know you think I'm, I'm uh, what the woman said, he's pig-headed and uh, full of himself. <laughs> oh, Lord, our help in ages past. Father, help us tonight to read Matthew 6 and 33 over and over and over and over, to dissect it, to break it down like a fraction, to go to the dictionary, find out what the word seek means, find out what the word first means, find out what the word kingdom means, Find out what the word added means. Find out. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Let me make, a, make an appeal for somebody that I know that has been ministering the word of God every morning. Uh, the word is working for me. That young lady there that's doing that program, the word is working for me. I get up and watch that program myself on a regular, regular 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 basis and when i'm not hearing something good out there then i go back to it and watch for the old ones and new ones and so what i'm asking you to do is send a blessing to her before the month is out before the year is out vonda gaspar you seeing it the word is working for me morning devotions send her a blessing don't just eat everything that she's dishing out and saying amen and good word send the sister some encouragement you know, one of the problems I have on my program, what to wear. <laughs> because I'm coming three times a day. And, you know, there are people who they watch. They watch it. Rev, you know, you wore that shirt last week, Tuesday. I said, it's my shirt. If I want to wear it the next week, it's okay. Oh, no, what, you're out there. You know, you look good out there. And um, you got to you gotta maintain a certain standard. You got to look a certain way. That's 21 times a week you're changing clothes. You know how much clothes you got to wash? Changing 21 times. And I'm not one of those men that believe my wife should do my laundry. I do my own laundry up in here, up in here. But it takes, a, it takes a while. It takes more than a minute to do Miracle Minute. It takes more than 10 minutes to get ready for uh, midday manna. And then to come back live in the night. And, and I'm a man. And, you know, basically we just brush our hair, put on the thing and zip up. And we look good. But it, it, it takes time to look good, brethren. You all know that. It takes time to look nice. And I'm a man. And I'm saying, the women have a worse time because they got to get every hair in place, every everything, everything, everything. It's more, uh, more drama for them to get ready. And there she is out there every single day, dressed to the nines, looking GQ every day, smiling. God bless you. I'm glad this is morning devotions. And I'm glad you're here with me on the program. The word is working for me. <laughs> and she got this great smile. I don't know how people do that thing. I, I can only smile for so long. And then my frown just comes out naturally. Anyway, enough said. Vonda Gaspar, the word is working for me. Send a blessing for her before the year is out. She has been sowing that word into your lives. The amening is good. The hallelujah ring is okay. But send her a blessing That'll do it. The boom is out. Yes, Sean, I'll send something and I'll, I'll ask her if you sent it. <laughs> and everybody else too. God bless. First the kingdom or kingdom first.